Vietnam. Just wow. Incredible landscapes, breathtaking views, jaw-dropping twisties, unreal single track, unique architecture, and most importantly, hardworking, innovative, happy, friendly, and fun-loving people. On New Year's Day 2023, my dad and I left for the airport at 5 a.m. to begin our journey to the other side of the world where we would meet up with the rest of our group for a two-week motorcycle tour of northern Vietnam. I had no idea just how special this entire experience would be. I knew little about Vietnam, the riding, the people, the culture, or the landscape leading into this trip. We arrived in Hanoi and had an entire day to adjust to jet lag, bargain with vendors for knockoff North Face gear, try local street food, and watch the world go by as we enjoyed cheap beer on a rooftop patio. This is our fearless leader, Terry. Noon, first day. Him and my dad are great friends, and he spends most of his time traveling the world via motorcycle. My brother and I were fortunate enough to be included on this trip thanks to Terry and my dad. On the second day, my brother shaved his signature monkey's tail, which he tends to do when he travels internationally, and we embarked on a scooter tour of Hanoi through a satisfying chaos that somehow manages to flow smoothly and efficiently. Not only did we get to see historical sites like the Hoa Lo prison and the crash site of the first B-52 bomber to be shot down, but we navigated tight alleyways around shop vendors and weaved through local traffic like we were in a real life video game. We even got a real up close and personal look at how the local cuisine is made. It was an epic experience and after two days in the big city, I was excited to begin the tour. The following day, we were introduced to our guides, Vin and Kong, and our mechanics, Dan and Yi, who would ensure that all 17 of us and our bikes survived the next 12 days of wide open thrill on our Honda XR150s. In the first day of the tour alone, my eyes were opened and my brain was overloaded by what I had seen. We saw scooters carrying anything and everything you could imagine, families of four, pigs, chickens, even a scooter carrying a scooter. There is seemingly no task too large for a scooter in Vietnam. We rode incredible windy roads and mountainous single track. We raced through small villages where we were greeted with smiles, waves, and excitement from the locals. The kids in Vietnam also somehow have learned the middle finger, most likely from the Kiwis and the Aussies. So we did receive a handful of those, but the kids just thought it was funny, so I started giving them the finger back. Homestays appear to be common across Vietnam, and we were lucky enough to stay at three of them throughout our trip, one which was on the first night of our tour. They're like hostels and the owners live there as well. We enjoyed our first night of the tour getting to know everyone, eating delicious food and enjoying rice wine, which is a signature Vietnamese drink enjoyed pretty much every night by the locals. 11 more days of non-stop exploration and new experiences followed. We visited booming tourist towns with impressive wealth and architecture, small and quaint towns with modern amenities, as well as villages of significant poverty where the people were living off of the land and nothing more. The one common trait amongst all of the variety in these places was the smiles we saw. Despite any hardships they may endure, Vietnamese people all seem to be friendly, happy, and hardworking. Here are a couple things you might find interesting about Vietnam if you're from the USA or a similar country. Almost all of the bathrooms simply have the shower integrated into the room. There's no separate shower area. There are steps and ledges everywhere that will catch you off guard. <coughs> Nobody stops you from absolutely ripping through construction zones. They have snake wine where there's literally a cobra in the bottle. And some of the bathrooms and hotels have odd windows that connect to the room. As an American, these are just a few things that I found to be different and interesting from what I'm used to. The street riding on this trip was without a doubt the best of my life and I'm not sure that anything will come close anytime soon. The road was never straight and there was never a dull moment. Focus was a constant requirement as not only was the road dynamic, but a chicken, pig, or water buffalo could become an unforeseen obstacle at any moment. Speaking of water buffalo, a few of us tried and failed to pet one while Billy was determined to ride one after he saw this guy do it. He didn't manage to get himself onto one, but it wasn't for lack of trying and he did get to pet one. Despite being on XR150s, 
Very rarely did we want to go faster than these little bikes allowed. In fact, I'm certain we would have gotten ourselves in big trouble had we been given more horsepower. Not only were the roads constantly demanding and exciting, but we saw almost no law enforcement the entire trip, and there are no speed limits aside from very occasionally on a mountain pass. We rode the bikes as hard as we could for 12 days straight, weaving through traffic and railing corners with no repercussions aside from a couple scrapes, bruises, bent bars, and missing turn signals. It was an absolute privilege to chase my 69-year-old dad through stunning single track and epic windy roads. On one of the mountain passes we went over, I chased my dad as he duked it out with two locals absolutely mobbing on their scooters. Throughout the trip, we were generally passing locals, but in a couple instances, they opted to show us how well they could ride and hold the pace. It was exhilarating, and my throttle was twisted to the stop constantly. My favorite portion of street riding the whole trip was on the final day. It felt like we were playing Grand Theft Auto. We were going through traffic, passing on the left, passing on the right, the sidewalk, and splitting traffic wherever we could. We rallied through traffic in such a blissful chaos that was just immensely exciting and felt highly illegal. Now, as for the off-road riding, I can say it was the most unique riding I've ever done. Throughout the trip, we definitely put these XR150s to the test through mud bogs, river crossings, rocky inclines, and more epic single track. Truthfully, we were all very impressed with what these bikes could do. Despite the displacement limitations, these engines would lug down to incredibly low RPM and just keep pulling. Don actually rode a scooter because the XRs are too tall for him, so he rallied all of this on his scooter as well. Did you know that there was such thing as paved single track? The incredible thing about all of these trails is that they were not created for recreation. They were created out of necessity. Locals used these trails on 110cc scooters hauling a bundle of wood in flip-flops and no helmet on an exposed mountainside. This is simply the way they live, and it's wildly impressive. There were sections of trail our seasoned group of riders were struggling on when a local would putt by on a scooter and not only put us all to shame, but provide some serious perspective on how good we have it back home. We did have our fair share of mechanical problems throughout the trip, and Don and E managed to get us back on the road in every instance. They changed six or more flats throughout the trip. Here's Dave, who was the undisputed wheelie king of the trip, ripping one on the 150 while E and Dan worked on fixing a rear flat. Throughout the trip, it was amazing to get to know our guides and mechanics and build real friendships with them. My brother and I stayed up late most nights drinking rice wine with Don and E. Long time no race. They spoke little English and we speak no Vietnamese, but it goes to show that people are people. Despite the language barrier, we were able to spend hour after hour drinking, laughing, and communicating to the best of our abilities. I'm incredibly thankful that these guys have taken the time to learn some English. Hey, Ken Ken! Because without that, we wouldn't have shared the experiences that we did. Our tour guide, Vin, spoke great English and generally leads tours of Aussies, so he has a vulgar yet hilarious sense of humor and a bit of an Aussie accent. You go, how do you go home, mate? He also has no shame in just belting out some John Legend. Oh, oh dude, he's feeling it. Same, same. <laughs> yeah. Good, 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 good. Or Adele. <laughs> it was amazing getting to know him learning about Vietnamese culture and to feel like we were riding dirt bikes together as friends rather than customers as the trip progressed. Our second guide, Kong, is just an absolutely fun-loving human who's a pleasure to be around. He always had a smile on his face, a cigarette in his mouth, and an unwavering excitement that rubbed off on everybody on the tour. Where's Happy Pay? We go now! We go now! Thanks to this incredible team, we experienced so much in one small portion of one country in Southeast Asia. It goes to show how much there is to see in the world, and it's mind-blowing to think about how much is happening in every town of every country every single day.
As I began to reflect on the trip, during the 33 hours of travel home, I realized how privileged I am to have this opportunity as an American. For us, we went on the trip of a lifetime for little more than the cost of living at home. From the bars to the nightclubs, mountaintops to stunning rivers, rural villages to big cities, Vietnam is a place that I will not soon forget. And even more important than the beautiful country itself was the amazing people who made this such an incredible experience that I will remember for a lifetime. Remember fans, if you yeah, like right. this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. That's all folks.